Today we are doing something a little bit different that I am very excited to do. We are play testing a real deck that I thought of based on some of the cards that are coming out in Evolving Skies. If you're not familiar, Evolving Skies is going to be our August set. There's a bunch of stuff that's happening in that set and I said we gotta make a deck, right? We have to make a deck and I decided to go with a single strike dragon deck and, and I'm, I'm really excited for I don't I actually have no idea if it's gonna work I am play testing it against my wife's Corviknight V Max deck and if you're wondering Nick, how are you play testing this deck well I made proxy cards and if you stick around after the video we will talk about how the proxy cards uh, how to make them so if you're interested in learning how to make proxy cards I go over three different ways of doing it three you can't see this three different ways of making proxy cards I don't know the the perfect way to play this deck yet obviously it hasn't released but it is based around Duraludon V Max which you can see I made a proxy for Duraludon V Max here it is and it has the ability Skyscraper, which prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from each of your opponent's Pokemon that has any special energy on it, which is really, really cool. It also has the G-Max Pulverization attack for 220 damage. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effect on your opponent's active Pokemon. So basically, it's almost like G-Max One Blow except for less energy. The pro it does less energy, it does less damage, but it's less energy. The problem is the combination of energies. It might be a little hard to see, but this is a fighting and two steel energies. So we got we have to run double energy here. In addition to uh, metal energy, we also have impact energy, which I, I don't I can't show, I'll just pop it up on the screen when I'm editing, but impact energy, what it does is it provides one energy of every kind, only one at a time though, and it can only be attached to a uh, single strike Pokemon, and I think you can't be poisoned, I think that's right. So we can use those, it's, they're not affected by Houndoom and Urn of Vitality, which is very unfortunate, it would make these cards way, way better, um, but that's okay, we have another route to kind of get some energy where we need it to be. If you notice, this is a dragon type Pokemon and dragon type Pokemon have one, no weakness and two, no resistance. So you're not hitting anything for weakness, but you're not uh, being resisted by anything. So I think that's fine. Now this does obviously evolve from Duraludon V. And if you notice, I'm using Duraludon V from Champion's Path. This is from this is in English. Uh, it's still a proxy card because I don't have any. But I mean, why am I using this Duraludon when there's going to be a Dragon type Duraludon V that comes out with this Duraludon V Max? Well, the answer is because this is a Metal Pokemon and the other Duraludon is a Dragon type. And I want to use a combination of Zacian V's Intrepid Sword ability to get Metal Energy onto this Pokemon and then be able to energy transfer to Duraludon V or VMAX. That's one option. The other option is that we can use Metal Saucer with the Metal Duraludon V. So if one of our Pokemon gets knocked out that has Metal Energy uh, attached to it or I have to discard an Energy or Metal Energy for some reason, Crushing Hammer, something like that, I can use uh, the Metal Saucer to get energy back onto this Duraludon V when it's on the bench before I evolve it into Duraludon V Max and it loses its steel typing and goes to dragon type. So different ways we can get energy onto these Duraludon. We have three ways, man manual, actually four, manual attachment, impact energy which provides uh, all energies, uh, energy transfer, and uh, the metal saucer so there's a lot of ways to get energy on this and we need that for this deck obviously we are running still hound doom we are only running a 2-2 line because they're not as important for this deck as it is say like a single strike urshifu deck which is totally reliant on single strike energy we are still running a couple to help us accelerate energy again we can put energy onto duraludon v max using uh, single strike energy and Houndoom, but also because we have the new 
Umbreon V, with its mean look attack, 30 damage the defending Pokemon can't retreat, but that's not really what we're using this for, we are using it for the Moonlight Blade attack, which does 80 damage, but if you have any damage counters on this Pokemon, it does an additional 80 damage. Getting damage counters on a single strike Pokemon is extremely easy because Houndoom puts 20 damage on your Pokemon when you attach an energy to it. Uh, using the, uh, what is a single strike roar ability. So we can get damage counters on this. And now this 100, and, this 80 base attack is doing 160 plus an additional 20 for every single strike energy we put onto it. So you could be doing 200 damage with this, uh, 220 damage with this Moonlight Blade if you time it correctly. We're also playing a copy of Umbreon VMAX mostly for the Dark Signal ability which basically when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon it's boss's orders you can switch your opponent's active Pokemon with one of their benched Pokemon great great ability and max arc three uh energies uh, what is it a dark and two colorless and it does 160 not a crazy attack we're not really using it for the attack we are using it more for uh, the ability, but it is good to know that we're not losing any base power when we evolve Umbreon V to Umbreon V Max, so that is good to know. And another reason why we're playing this Umbreon is because I'm expecting Psychic Dex to just be out of control, right? Psychic Dex is going to be out of control, so now we have a counter for Psychic Dex with our Umbreon V and V Max. We also have a counter to some of the uh, Ice Rider Calyrax decks and other decks that are weak to Steel because we have our Zacian V and Duraludon V. Duraludon V's attack is pretty garbage. So we're not really gonna talk about Duraludon V as an attacker. Our Steel attacker will be Zacian V. So if you are playing an Ice Rider Calyrax deck, you can hit hard with Zacian V. Sorry for the, for the glare, I apologize. Let me just move that. If we're playing a Psychic deck, well then we have our Umbreon V and V Max, and nothing is weak to our Dragon. So, but we're covering the major types, and, and I, it was not a, a kind of happy coincidence that this, this ended up being this way, but that's what we're doing. We are running a bunch of other copies of cards like Professor's Research, Crobat, Boss's Orders. We have our Fighting Energy. This will get changed to Impact Energy, uh, Single Strike Energy, uh, Quick Ball, Evolution Incense, Escape Rope. Uh, all of our normal consistency cards, Marnie Switch, Evolution Incense. Um, we're going to have Metal Energy in there. Just running through the deck real quick. This is going to take the place of our uh, Metal Energy. Uh, and Tower of Darkness, there's our energy switch. You know, we have a bunch of normal single strike cards. Now, you might have noticed there's a few other things that we have proxies of. Scroll of Scorn, Urn of Vitality, still pretty important. We want to be able to just, you know, put a scroll on or put a scroll on and for one fighting energy, which we can get with Houndoom, be able to hit for pretty big damage. So, scroll is still important in this deck. Earn, we want to be able to get our single strike energies back. We don't get the impact energy, like I said, but we still want the single strike energy just in case late game, you know, our Gerald on VMAX has 280 damage on it. Well, we need to be able to put a fighting energy and do an attack. Well, now we can, uh, we can scroll scorn for 290 damage, which would be more than this 220. So, Alternatively, if we need extra damage, we have Karen's Conviction. That's right, Revenge of the Karen. During this turn, your single strikes Pokemon attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon for every prize card you have taken. So if it's, again, late in the game and your, your opponent's taken four prize cards, maybe they knocked out a, a, you know, a Duraludon V and a Zacian V or something like that. Well, now they took four prizes, so your single strike attacks are gonna do 80 more damage, which means this G-Max Pulverization goes from 220 to 300. 
100 damage, not including if you have any single strike energies or anything like that on there. So it is very possible to build up to a massive attack with single strike. The last card I want to talk about is Raihan. You can only play this card if one of your Pokemon were knocked out last turn, but you get to attach a basic energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. If you do, then you could search your deck for any card and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck after. Crazy, crazy good card. They gust up a Houndour or Houndoom or an Umbreon. They take the knockout. Well, now you need to be able to get energy onto one of your other Pokemon so you can attack next turn. Now you can use something like Raihan, get more energies onto your Drowndon. This is great especially for metal energy. We need ways to accelerate metal energy because it's so awkward for us to do, and we don't run that many in this deck, so we've got, got to be able to get that metal energy, and now we can search for another card. Maybe we search for an energy, maybe we search for a trainer, or uh, definitely not a supporter because we won't be able to use it that turn, but you search for something that you can use that turn, Maybe you get your urn so you, you can use Houndoom's ability. Maybe you get your scroll. Uh, you, you know, you attach a fighting energy from your discard pile to uh, your Duraludon, which you probably won't have a fighting energy. It's just going to be metal. So that doesn't work. But you get the idea. You get an energy card from your discard pile, and then you search a deck for any card that you need. That's basically the deck. If you want the full deck list, it is in the description. I just wanted to kind of talk about how it's going to go. Like the strategy that I have in my head is early game, use Zacian V to build up some energy, build up to a quick attack, and use Intrepid Sword for its ability to help get cards into our hand. Set up our Duraludon, Duraludon VMAX as quickly as we can because once we get Duraludon VMAX into the active, our opponent can't attack us with any Pokemon that has special energy. And guess what? There are a ton of Pokemon that are going to be using special energy. Use things like Umbreon V and VMAX as needed. And there you go. That's the deck. So let's get into the gameplay. Uh, we only played a game. Uh, my wife doesn't really know how to play. She's not a, a good player. I don't want to say it like that because she's, she's just inexperienced. Pokemon's not really her thing. So, you know, if she misplays or whatever, you know, just ignore that. And don't forget, ooh, big, big oops. We are giving away an Inteleon VMAX build, uh, League Battle Deck on Sunday. Go to my Twitter in the description below and find out how to enter and win. So we start off the game. And I unfortunately need to take a mulligan. So my wife is setting up. And as you can tell, I speeded up this video, right? We're doing it at almost two times speed. We are, we are not this fast. It's just otherwise the video would have been way too long in order to, uh, to make it watchable. So what we're doing is she is playing her card. She did forget to... Uh, put down her like, flip over her basic Pokemon I forgot my prizes so normally that would be an issue but because I didn't draw any cards or shuffle my deck or do anything that would alter the top six cards of my deck it's really not that big of a deal it does take me a minute to remember uh, she my wife is really new and so as a result I'm answering a lot of questions and helping her set up and sometimes I forget to do things myself so I did forget my prizes and uh, so, you know, don't flame me for that. But she goes ahead and plays a quick ball. She gets her Bronzor after benching Lucario Melmetal GX. And she is playing a Corviknight VMAX deck. And I am doing uh, a new Drowdon VMAX deck. You see me get my prizes uh, sorted. So I constantly have to remind my wife little things like, hey, you need to discard a card when you play quick ball and stuff like that, which is very, very funny. So she's taking a second to decide what she wants to do. She goes for the Intrepid Sword. And when I say she takes a second to decide, I mostly mean I have to tell her what Intrepid Sword does. So I now attach an energy to Duraludon VMAX and bench another one. I, pref I don't know if I prefer the metal one just yet. At the moment, the metal one's the one I was going with because you can use metal saucer with it uh, and you can't do that with the dragon type. So, you know, it's just a way to s check it out and try different things. We, we only played like one game, two games. So, you know, I, I definitely need a lot more, uh, you know, practice with this deck before I can make any decisions on 
do I really like it? Is it really good? This and that. So I play a Crobat for two. I can't really do anything. So now it is Lauren's turn. And she goes for another Quick Ball. She looks for a Crobat. Now, normally, if you are playing against another person, you're playing in a tournament, the way she played this Crobat down looks like she is playing it onto the field. Like, she, she has put it onto her bench. And I kind of have to tell her, hey, this isn't how you do that. Like, that's not what Quick Ball does. It goes into your hand. Do you want to play it right now? Because otherwise, you know, you have to put it into your hand. And she said no. And then she looked at her hands like, oh, actually, I kind of have to play it anyway. So she was able to Crobat for one and get a Tool Jammer. So I tell her what Tool Jammer does. And she decides to play it to the Zacian V. She's not really sure how to, like, show that it's attached. So I just do that for her real quick. And she finishes a turn with an Intrepid Sword. Now, she's not 100% sure what a metal is energy is like I, she just shows it to me i'm like yeah that's 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 a metal energy they look like that so she does do it correctly and attach it to her zacian my turn i draw and unfortunately if i remember correctly at this point in the game i have a hand full of energy and stuff so i really can't do too too much and i don't want to research because i don't want to lose my single strike energies and all this kind of stuff so i just attach a metal energy and evolve into duraludon v max and i get to attach a scroll of scorn which does not work because of her tool jammer and that is a little bit of annoying so I'm just kind of pointing out to her what this Skyscraper ability is. We talked about it at the beginning of the video, but in case you don't remember, if you have a special energy attached to your Pokemon, that Pokemon doesn't do any damage to Drowndon VMAX. So it's now her turn. She draws. You can kind of see into her hand. Uh, she does a much better job of showing the camera her hand than I do, although I wasn't really trying to show the camera my hand, which I should do in the future. So she goes ahead and Marnish, uh, I did have to tell her that you're not supposed to look at your hand when you're shuffling it because then you're not really shuffling it, but whatever, it's a friendly little match. She goes and attaches her third energy to Zacian V, so it is ready to attack. And she's not really sure like the, the like how attacking works 100%. She plays a training court stadium card. And I know you really can't see it, but that's what it is, training court. So she goes and decides that it's time to attack for 230 damage, which is honestly quite a bit. And I'm very happy that I have the VMAX to be able to take a, a big hit like that. So I draw, I quick ball, I get rid of a metal energy because uh, I do have a metal saucer that I'll be able to put on. I am looking for my second Crobat, but I don't have it, unfortunately. It's, it ended up being prized, and you can see me furiously looking through this deck. So I end up settling on a Zacian, because at least I can draw cards using the Intrepid Sword ability, and it winds up helping a fair amount. So I started the shuffle, and then I realized, you know what, I'm just going to play another Quick Ball. I'm going to stop shuffling, and I'm going to get myself a Hound Door, so that I can start accelerating energy with... Uh, Hound Doom eventually with the single strike raw ability. So now I finally decide, okay, time to really shuffle the deck and let Lauren cut it. So she goes and cuts the deck and I don't think I have too much more to do. Um, I can't evolve Hound Door. So I do play Metal Saucer and get an energy onto Zacian. And I think from here, I just Intrepid Sword. Yeah, you can see me point to the card. I try to be conscious of like pointing to the cards and especially for a video where I, I, you don't hear me doing it in real time that you, you kind of have an idea of what I'm doing. So Lauren's turn, she knows to not play that coding metal energy and she's learning for the first time that she can't attack with Zacian because Brave Blade doesn't let you attack two turns in a row. So she does go ahead and Intrepid Sword, but you can see that she drew some metal energy that she should have attached to Zacian. Obviously, I don't know that at the moment because I, uh, I can't see into her hand. So she should have attached those metal energies. I don't know if it would have made a huge difference, but on my turn, I decide to metal uh, transfer, not metal transfer, just energy transfer, a metal energy from Zacian to my Duraludon so I can manually retreat 
and not uh, get knocked out from Brave Blade next turn. So I use Intrepid Sword and draw my three cards to end my turn. Lauren's taken a minute to decide what she wants to do. She attaches an energy to Lucario Melmetal. Uh, I'm not sure why she drew a card. I don't remember. Maybe I missed it. Maybe she didn't draw a card at the beginning of her turn. She does forget to do that. Maybe she drew an extra card. I really don't know. Um, but she does go for the Professor's Research. She's a sloppy player sometimes. Like, her cards are all... You, can really, you can't see it, but her deck is, like, spread out all over the place. I don't know how she lives like that. Uh, she does bench a Corviknight V for the first time, and she's asking about training court. She wants to know if she can play it again, but uh, I tell her, no, you can only have one stadium at a time. So she's not really sure what to do. I think at this point she had asked me if she can use a supporter card because she wanted to play Boss's Order to knock out that Duraludon V Max, but unfortunately, since she had played Professor's Research, she can't, and she goes for the Brave Blade attack. Now, I did tell her that I wouldn't get knocked out. I would actually keep uh, my Duraludon V because of its ability. That takes 30 less damage from attacks, so I still have 20 HP. I did get called a cheater for that. <laughs> she did not like that I uh, did that. So I eventually drop a Tower of Darkness and discard Revenge of the Karen to draw two cards with Tower of Darkness, Metal Saucer onto my Zacian V, and here we are. I don't really think I have much else going on this turn. Uh, I do Marnie. It's okay, so I do that. And she didn't look at her cards. You can see how fast I am pulling those cards off. Now, I do get her into a kind of a dead hand. Now, she, she does have Intrepid Sword that she can get a couple more cards. But for the most part, her hand is not that great. So that, that kind of works in my favor. My hand wasn't particularly good either. So, she goes and evolves into the Corviknight V-Max. Now she has free retreat with it if she ever needs. And she's just going to attach a Metal Energy to the Locario Mel Metal. It already has one, so now it has two. And I think that's the end of her turn. She's just going to Intrepid Sword to finish off the turn. She's, again, deciding if she wants the boss. She elects not to, which I do think was a mistake. I think she should have bossed up either my Zacian or my Crobat or something. But it's either way, it's my turn. I Tower of Darkness, uh, the Single Strike Energy, play Urn of Vitality to get it back. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. So I search my discard pile to make sure that I don't have another Single Strike Energy and I don't. So I give her my deck to cut. I don't think there's really much I can do this turn. So, I go ahead and Professor's Research, draw a few more cards. And yeah, that's where we're at. I Metal Saucer, get a second energy onto that Zacian, trying to power up uh, an attacker. Evolution Incense to get the Houndoom. And I didn't manually attach an energy onto my uh, Duraludon. I don't remember exactly which energy I attached. I can't remember if it is an impact energy or if it is a single strike energy. But I did attach that manually. And I should have used Intrepid Sword or, or Single Strike. Or I should have done something. I don't know why I didn't. So, either way, she goes ahead and puts a Metal Coating Energy onto her Corviknight. And now that Corviknight can't do damage to my Duraludon VMAX. So, something to note there. That, that kind of does matter later. I don't really know what she's doing. I think she's just deciding what she should play. I don't really know why she's taking so long. And she does decide to declare her attack, take out my Duraludon, and claim two prizes. So from here, I go ahead and get my Duraludon VMAX into the active spot. 
It has a scroll of scorn. It has an impact energy and a single strike energy. I attach another uh, impact energy. And I go ahead and Tower of Darkness away. I'm going to play a nice Marnie. Shuffle that hand beautifully. Look at that shuffling technique. As my wife stares at her cards while she shuffles them. Uh, I <laughs> draw five cards. I guess I did single strike raw. Uh, maybe I did it when I wasn't... When I was shuffling or something like that. I said I'm just going to do it. Just to... So I don't have to like search and shuffle twice or something like that. So she takes forever. I go ahead and G-Max Pulverization to claim my first two prizes. And we are tied at four each. So her turn. Uh, she's not sure who to promote. She does go with the Lucario Mel Metal GX. Mostly because I reminded her of the GX attack Full Metal Wall. Which for the rest of the game, her Pokemon will take 30 less damage. And it, since she has a second energy attached to it, will discard all the energy from my Pokemon. So it is kind of annoying, but here we are, right? That's that's what uh, I'm explaining to her. She's reading the ability. She, you know, she's never used a GX attack. She's never used a tag team Pokemon before. So this is a little new for her. So she finally finishes reading the ability and here we go. I don't know if she has much to do aside from Full Metal Wall, but I guess we're going to find out together. That's the problem with reading these uh, or doing these the next day. I have no idea what we did. I, we were, I was so tired when I was playing this match yesterday and just I could not tell you what we did or why or <laughs> anything like that. So fun times for everyone. Warren really struggling to decide but does go with the professor's research next time i'm going to zoom out the camera a little bit more so you can see the entire play mats and play field i just you know i, I want to make sure you can see the cards as well like i don't want there to be any confusion as to what we're playing or something like that but if you can't see our decks and like our hands and stuff it is a little challenging she gets the metal saucer onto the corviknight vmax which still cannot damage my uh Duraludon V Max. She goes for the full metal wall, flips over her marker, and I discard my energies. She could have used Steel Fist, but it wouldn't have been enough to knock out my Duraludon. So she opted to go with the full metal wall, which I think is the smarter move. Obviously, she should have used the full metal wall as early as possible, but you know, I'm not gonna I help her and I tell her things, but I'm not going to tell her everything. She, you know, if, she, if she's going to play, if she's going to learn, then she has to be able to, to identify her own mistakes. So I go ahead and single strike Raw again. And now, even though she had used full metal wall, I have enough damage on my, uh, on my Duraludon VMAX to take the knockout on this, uh, on the Sicario Mel Metal. So I had 230 from the Brave Blade, plus 20 from two different single strike rows. It's actually 40, so we're at 270. The uh, single strike energy gives me 20, so now we're at 290, and then the Scroll of Scorn gives an extra 10, so we are at 300 damage. And I am explaining all this to her in the moment. She does not like how easily single strike can build damage and the fact that like me putting an extra damage counter or two damage counters on my pokemon is actually helpful in this situation because it is a little counterintuitive the idea of like more damage means you know something good for you typically you know it's obviously the opposite so she was very upset did call me a cheater but i knock out the lucario mel metal in one shot and take three prizes leaving me with just one again as a reminder she cannot deal damage to my duraludon because of the coding mental energy so my ability prevents damage from my opponent's attacks when they have a special energy attached so she's kind of stuck here no matter what she's gonna do she is gonna end up losing and that's gonna be the game right there she you know she realizes there's nothing left to do She's going to finish out her turn, and she is going to Metal Saucer. I don't know how she has so many 
uh, metal energies in her discard pile. I had to explain to her that Crobat is not a metal Pokemon. Uh, she was very confused and upset by that, but she does eventually accept it and put the energy onto her Bronzong. She is going to do something. Now, I only have 290 damage on my Duraludon VMAX, but she is going to swear that I have 300, and that's kind of what we're arguing about at the moment. She, We end up doing a little bit of math, and, and I am going to cut some of it out because it takes a minute, but ultimately, I just agree, yeah, sure, I have 300 damage. She does drop the Bronzor, and she plays Switch. So, Duraludon VMAX has 330 HP, and yeah, she is she is looking you know, like she's in a pretty good spot to to at least counter knockout Forty is 270. I don't know where she's getting 330 from. So, but either way, I give it a knockout. It doesn't really matter because I can play Raihan, which you can only play if one of your Pokemon was knocked out the previous turn. Mine was, so you get to take an energy from your discard pile and attach it to one of your Pokemon. If you do, you can then just go ahead and search your deck for any card. I don't really need to do that because as you can see, I declare my attack and claim my last prize. So if you made it this far, it's because you want to learn how to make proxies. And there are three ways to do it. I'm sure there are more, but these are the three ways I know. So the first one is the cheapest, but the most time consuming and annoying. And that is to literally just write out all the information onto a piece of paper. Uh, this is an Eldegoss V proxy. I have all the important information, the name, the HP, the type, weakness, resistance, retreat, the ability, uh, the ability and the name of the ability, the attack name, cost, uh, damage, all that kind of stuff that's all on this card. As you can see, it kind of gets full pretty easily because you only have a two and a half by three and a half space to to get all this information and depending on your handwriting it can be kind of difficult so if you're on a budget or you you know don't have a printer this is the the way to do it but if you want something that looks a little nicer well we can make proxy cards that are just Eldegoss V and then there you go you're done you don't have to do anything so let's get into how to make these so we are going to go into a website called LimitlessTCG.com. They are a great source of information and we're going to use them for their proxy uh, tool. So you go into tools and you click on proxies at the top and now you just search a card. But if you keep in mind, only standard and expanded cards are supported. So if you want to use this, you can only use it for cards that are currently legal in standard and expanded so i can't search for you know i could search for duraludon v but i can't search for the dragon type or the dragon or the duraludon v max because they're not in standard just yet so let's go back to our eldegoss example look eldegoss v there's a few different ones depending on like this is the regular one from rebel clash this is the um the full art and then you have one from shining fates and all that kind of stuff but these are not v so we're just going to choose the one don't worry about the art it doesn't make that much of a difference as long as you get the right card so this is the full art version and let's say i need metal saucer actually you know what i'm going to use cards that i actually have to make proxies of because that's kind of why i'm doing this so we'll just click it to get rid of it and i need metal saucer so we'll do Metal Saucer. And now, if I needed another card, let's say I needed Metal Energy, whatever. So there we go, there's my, there's my Metal Energy. I can now just click Print. And when I go to print it, it will give me a sheet of paper that has all the cards on it. And I just cut them out and I can put them into a sleeve like I did the sheet of paper. Super easy way of doing it. So what happens if you need a card that is not in standard, like Impact Energy? I gotta make a Impact Energy uh, proxy card. Well, just search for the card that you are looking for, Impact Energy uh, Pokemon TCG, and you'll find something like from Bulbapedia that has the information for the card, for the translation, and the picture. So we're just gonna go ahead and save the image, 
We want to make sure that we save it as like a JPEG or as like a PDF or something like that. So once we have our image saved, we can go over to Canva and Canva is a great website. I use it all the time for making Instagram posts and uh, YouTube thumbnails. I know some people might use fancier software, but this is what I like. It's what I know. It's really easy to do. There is a premium option, but everything I'm going to show you can be done in the free option. So we're going to go to create design and we need to choose custom size. And before we pick the size, we need to change from pixels to inches. Now, normally when you think about measurements it's height and width but this time it's width and height so we're going to enter two and a half whoops two and a half inches wide and three and a half inches tall and then we will click create new design from there it is extremely simple in the uploads tab you'll have all the stuff you upload how do you upload something you can click upload media or from your downloads, you can just click and drag into this. So once we have our uploaded image, we are just going to bring our uh, impact energy and we're gonna right click, set image as background. Now we need to get the actual text of the card onto this. And so we're gonna go into elements and we're gonna get this uh, shape, this square, and we're gonna drag it over and we are going to resize it so that it covers the previous text. And we are gonna change the color of it too because I don't want that, uh, that purple background. So we are gonna change it to white because this way our black text will be over it. And then we can just control C and control V to copy and paste respectively the box, resize it. And now we can go into our text and we can go ahead and add a heading. So we are going to make this say impact energy and we just gotta resize it. So now that it is smaller, we can go over and pull this over so it, the box uh, allows the text to be a little bigger. We can make it as big as we want. I think that's probably good enough. And then we just have to get our text for the actual card. So we're gonna go ahead and add a heading and we can do one or two things. We can copy and paste the text from Bulbapedia or we can just type it in ourselves, however you wanna do it. So we just wanna copy and paste the text instead of typing it all. So here's again, the card from Bulbapedia and we are just going to select all this if my mouse would cooperate, control C and then we will go ahead and control V. Now obviously, it looks like a lot. Uh, we just need to resize this now. Now we have all the text copied. We just got to resize. And it didn't delete the heading thing. So we do have to get rid of that. Okay. So let's resize. A little too small, I think. And again, like we did with the title, we are going to drag this box all the way over so that we can make our text bigger. So we can actually read it on our card. And I wanna put a little bit of space there. I don't want it to be like way too uh, dense. This, this is just a text heavy card, unfortunately. And there we go, that's, uh, that's our, we can probably bold it if you want it to be like a little more legible. But there you go, there's your impact energy. Now that you're ready to uh, download this, you're gonna download it however you want and then print it. I tend to download it as a PDF just because, uh, you know, whatever. That's, that's how I download it. And then once you download it, you can go ahead and print it and you are done with your proxy card. And that's the whole video. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you never miss another video. I know this is a little bit of a longer one. There was a ton of information in this video, but sometimes you gotta do it. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. If you really wanna help out the channel, leaving a like and a thumbs up is the best way to tell YouTube that other people should be watching these videos. And if you absolutely love this content, you're like, I can't get enough of this guy, well, Good news for you, I just started a brand new Discord server, link in the description below, mainly for Pokemon players to 
find other people to play with, to play test decks and discuss things. It's, that's the main goal, but we do have things for Pokemon VG, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Go, all that kind of stuff. It is a Pokemon channel and I would really love to see you guys come and join us there. Again, link in the episode description, just like my Twitter and Instagram if you want to win that Inteleon VMAX battle deck. So yeah, that is it. That's going to do it. Thank you so much and I will see you next time.